Hello, today is August 19th, 2009. We're meeting today with Mr. Stanley Cass at his home in Fort Collins, Colorado. My name is Brad Hoops. I'm the interviewer for the Northern Colorado Veterans History Project. Welcome, Stan, uh, and thanks for participating in the project today. I think we, uh, we were talking earlier, uh, you actually go by Bob. Uh, how, how'd that come about? It depends who talks to me. Yeah. Or Sarge with, the, with some of the locals. Uh, yeah. How did those two nicknames... Uh... Well, Laura, my, my son's name is Bob, and uh, Laura likes to call me Bob. Uh, don't ask me why. <laughs> okay. But I'm Bob. Okay. So for, uh, for those watching this interview, uh, through the interview, I'll be calling him Bob. So, okay. Uh, okay. Well, Bob, let's start out, if we could. Tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your date of birth, where you were born, a little bit about your family. Uh, I was born August 31st, 1924. Got an 85th uh, coming up then, huh? Hmm? An 85th birthday coming up. August 31st, yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> and, uh, Where were you born? In Brooklyn, New York. Okay. You can tell by my accent. Yeah, right? yeah. I knew there was an yeah. East Coast accent there. Uh, any brothers and sisters? I have uh, had two brothers. They're both gone now. Uh -huh. And one uh -huh. was older. One was young. So you're the middle child? Yeah. And my, my younger brother, believe it or not, fell in the bathtub and had a heart attack. Huh. And my older brother Larry, there's two years between us all. My older brother Larry uh, just never woke up. Huh. Died in his sleep. What did your... Uh... Oh, I turned the lap for a second. What, uh, what did your father do for a living? Uh, he, uh, he worked a sewing machine in the garment center in New York. When he came to this country, he came from Russia. Oh, wow. He couldn't speak English or anything. But uh, he learned how to work a sewing machine, and that's what he did all his life. Huh. Uh, and you grew up your entire, uh, grew up and raised, went through the school system in, in Brooklyn? Yeah. Okay. Uh, where were you when, uh, when you heard that Pearl Harbor had been bombed? Do you remember where you were and what you were thinking? Sure was. Uh, I was home, and uh, I, t I told my father then I'm going to the army. So he had he was he, he was in the English army. So uh, he said, That's what I did. I went down and joined up, and I went to parachute school. Well, now uh, were you still in school or had you graduated? I uh, just graduated. I was just 18 at the time. And in fact, I, I didn't graduate. I got my papers later. Is that right? I, I, I told the principal I'm going into the Army. Wow. He had no objection. Wow. Now, why did you come to choose the Army over the other uh, services? I wanted to be a paratrooper. Is that right? And that sounds funny. How did you come about that? Because that was a fairly new uh, way of... Yeah, well, I, I saw an exhibition on TV uh, on... On the news, uh, reels, the movies, yeah, uh -huh. and uh, they showed these guys jumping, and I said, "That's what I want to do." <laughs> Had you even ever been in an airplane before, prior to that? Well, once. <laughs> yeah. huh. It's pretty tough to. The, the first jump is the toughest. Yeah. After that, it gets to be a pleasure. Wow. Because well, you know what to expect. So then, how much longer after Pearl Harbor was bombed? Then how much longer did you go down and, and enlist? Soon uh, after. That, that year. Is that right? 41. Yeah, 40, uh, 41. It was right after that. And then how much soon after that, before you actually were shipped off? Uh, was there much of a gap? or? No, uh, I took basic training in New Jersey. And then from there, they sent me to a parachute school, because that's what I wanted. And that's, a, that's a, a very hard program to get into. Isn't that a, a pretty elite program to... Yeah, yeah, you had to pass certain physical tests. You had to run two miles, walk five miles. And uh, they checked you both ways, coming in and out. And they wanted nothing but the best yeah. of the crops, so to speak. Right, right. Did, how was that transition going from civilian life into military life for you? Well, to me, it was, didn't matter. I grew up in an orphanage, so I had one military type life, ran into the army, it's like I ne never left home. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds so, funny. So you, you started uh, basic in, in Jersey and then and then ship, where, where was parachute school down in Georgia? Yeah. 
Fort okay. Benning. Fort Benning? Okay. And and how was that? What was that training like? Well, I enjoyed every minute of it. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, we, we complained because it was a thing to do. But uh, to me, it was fun. It was an experience. Yeah. Uh, you never get anyplace else. Yeah, right, right. And you talk about that first jump uh, being the hardest. Uh, can you walk us through your feelings and, 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 and going well, through that first jump? Well, you, uh, you line up in a plane. There were 16 on the plane. And you hook up, you call your hook up to a, a riser, uh -huh. the plane which would open your chute and you went out. And uh, it would open your chute. If it didn't open, you had a malfunction. You pull your ripcord so your other chute would open. And uh, that's about it. And um, can, you, can you remember that first jump? What, oh, uh, yeah. I mean, Never uh, forget that. What, what was that? What were you thinking as you're standing and, and as you went out the door? I mean, uh, I said, Cass, you're crazy. <laughs> you got to be a nut yeah. to jump out of a good moving plane. Right, yeah. <laughs> but after a while, it got to be fun. Uh, yeah. uh. And uh, now, when you were down in Georgia, was that. Was that just purely uh, school, or had you been put into a, a unit yet at that point? No, no. Uh, uh, I was at jump school. We went to jump school at Fort Benning. You had to have five jumps to qualify, and then they gave you a pair of wings. Mm -hmm. you know? and, uh, that's and, then, and then from Fort Benning, uh, take us to a timeline where you went from Fort Benning then after jump school. Fort Benning, we were told we were going to go overseas, so we... Uh, they took us to a ferry in Jersey, over to Staten Island, and then on a ship, and we went over to... Now, did you have a chance? To, you're so close to home. Did you have a chance to get home and see anybody no. before? No. no they, they wouldn't give you any time. They, did, they didn't want you uh, loose lips, sink shifts. Oh, right. They didn't want everybody talking to know that we were going overseas. Now, what was the rough time period of this when you were leaving for overseas? What was the timeline roughly? Uh, was that... Uh, 42, 43? Oh, it's uh, 43. 43, yeah. And we jumped in Normandy, 44. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. So, uh, you get off to Staten Island, you get on a ship. Uh, we went to uh, 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 Portsmouth, no. We get the name of the city in England where we docked. And then uh, from there we went well, into... Well, back up real quick and... and Let's talk about that that crossing. Just to, how was that for you? Did you get your sea legs? Did you get oh, no. seasick, or how did we all got sick as dogs? Oh. We were lying in bunks about four high, and uh, so we used to fight to get the top bunk because when you threw up, <laughs> not really that bad. But, yeah, yeah. You know, but a few guys got sick. You know. Oh boy, any any problems with German U-boats or anything on the crossing? No, we were lucked over. Yeah. We used to go in convoys. We had destroyers and uh, flights coming to help us out. So we had no problem at all. Uh -huh. Now, were you already you were in, already formed up into a unit at that point? Yeah, we went over. Uh, we formed the Fort Benning. We were called the 508th Parachute Infantry Regiment, 82nd Airborne Division. Oh, okay. There were there were three regiments. To a division, plus uh, tanks and assorted armored units, you know. But I guess the division had about twenty thousand men. Hmm. So we had an army all by ourselves. Right, 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 right. So okay, so you land in in England uh, and stationed there for a while. We're, we're... You know, for some reason, uh, they took us to Scotland, and we took some more training in Scotland, and then. Uh, to Ireland, Northern Ireland. I don't know why they did this, to, maybe it's to familiarize ourselves with the people uh, to adjust to their way of doing things. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just thinking. Right. And um, after that, uh, we went to, uh, we took off at night and we jumped in Normandy at midnight, believe it or not. Okay, so now we're. we're we're preparing. You're, you're talking the night before the actual D-Day yeah, landing. Yeah. Uh, describe that. How, okay, so this is your first actual combat. Talk, talk. What were you feeling as you were flying over the channel and you knew that, okay, 
here in a couple hours, this isn't training, this is the real thing. What was going through your mind? What were you thinking at uh, something like I'm that? I'm going to get killed. Is that right? I, I knew. Uh, maybe I wish they wouldn't, but we, we all felt we had a, that feeling that we're going to die. Wow. And we were put there for a reason. I don't know what the reason was, was supposed to be, but we were there. Hmm. Were you able, uh, in a position in the plane, to, to see out, out at all, or could, was there windows? It was dark. In? Oh, okay. I, Midnight, you know. I uh, wasn't sure if you could see the, the ships below the, <coughs> the armada or, or the other. Couldn't see anything. Okay. They would travel without lights. You're lucky to see your hand in front of your face. Yeah, yeah. And I imagine it was too loud in the plane to, to carry on a conversation, or were you just, were you able to we, talk with you? Yeah, we whispered to each other. Yeah. We told to keep it down. I remember that. Yeah. The, uh, the lieutenant, the flight lieutenant came in and he said, hey guys, keep it down. We want to hear anything we can from the outside. I said, okay. So we whispered to each other. Huh. Huh. Okay, so w let's move ahead here now. You're you're flying, you're getting close to the, to the coast now and, and Germans are starting to shoot up flak and oh, stuff. Yeah. Talk, uh, okay, talk about that as you go through that and then, and then the jump and walk us, uh, you can give a uh, described us as, as that happened. We knew we couldn't, the sound of the motors would attract the, the 88s, the German mm. batteries down below. So we, we kept it as quiet as we could. And uh, in fact, we whispered to each other, I told yeah. you. And uh, as we came close to the shore, we were told we're going to jump very soon. We're going to land in the dark. We don't know exactly where, but it's going to be in mostly farmland. That, that felt good, where we would land in the city, mm -hmm. we hoped. Yeah. Uh, get hit by a building. You know? Right, right. A few guys did. Wow. 100 pieces. And uh, we eventually uh, formed up. It took hours for us to get together with our groups because we were scattered all over. Well, how, how was that actual, as you got over and you started taking fire from the ground, uh, was the, the plane all over the place? Or, I mean, was it, was it, no, it the was, noise and... Uh, it, was, it, it was steady. It had to be steady for us to jump. Yeah. Because otherwise, if they were going like this, you get hit by the tail of the plane as you're going out. Yeah. You know. I guess I'm, I'm just looking at... From my standpoint, never been anywhere near anything like that. Yeah. Just seeing movies like uh, Band of Brothers and such, and oh, yeah. and the chaos that it seemed like there was. Uh, uh, what was the view as as you jumped and your chute was opening and you were just waiting to land? What were you seeing around you? Uh, an occasional farm light. Uh, we didn't know what it was though. You saw a, a light here, uh -huh. but it, it was out as far as it went. It was like somebody had a flashlight. Ah, uh -huh. okay. But. Uh, that's about the consensus that we discovered afterwards we got together. We talked about that. And uh, it was just dark. But you never took any ground fire? at. Uh... Uh, we lucked out. Uh, oh, okay. The planes did, but we had already jumped. Jumped, okay. Gotcha, uh, okay. A few of the planes, I saw them come down. Ooh. Oh. oh, boy. Okay, so you land, and like I said, once everything I've read and, and movies like Band and Brothers and such that there was chaos. Everybody didn't, did you make it to your your initial land zone, or no. how far off were you? Oh, uh, way off. Were you? Yeah. yeah, we were supposed to be uh, 12 miles in from the beach where we were supposed to fight our way toward the beach mm -hmm. to stop the Germans from meeting the, the beach troops. Okay. And uh, we did. We, uh, we did all right. We, uh, and your unit was able to, to gather together? I yeah, mean, we, uh, we knocked out a tank. With a hand grenade. Really? One of the guys, I hope he's still alive, crawled up into the tank, opened the tank turret, dropped the grenade down, and took off and wham, we got our tank. Wow. <laughs> That's something. Wow. Wow. So uh, you landed, uh, knocked out the tank, and you started working your way towards the beach? Yeah, uh, that was the whole idea. Uh -huh. Once we reached the beach, beach troops, uh, our job technically was over. Mm-hmm. Because it was just to make sure that the beaches were secure, mm -hmm. and uh, we did. And then, uh, how soon after you landed did you did you meet up with the beach troops? Was it an all day affair or a couple days? Or uh, it was an all it was a day and a half, I guess. Okay. 
We landed at night. It was the afternoon the next day. Okay. A day and a half. Okay. And um, from the funny, I, I got to remember all this now. Yeah. But it comes back to you very quickly. Okay. You never forget it. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine that. Yeah. So you've, uh, you guys have made it now back to the beach. You've linked up with the beach troops. Uh, you said effectively your job was over. It was, yeah. And did you stay there or did you guys go, then go back to England? or? We went back to England. Okay. And uh, we were ready for our next jump, which was uh, Holland. Okay. How did, how did, your, uh, did your unit uh, fare in that, in that initial landing? Was there quite oh, a bit of casualties? And yeah, about half. Half. And then some of the guys cracked up mentally. It's not easy. You know. Oh, no. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh, I still see one guy. I used to. But he's in the, I think maybe he's gone. He lived in the Midwest somewhere. Anyway, I said that some Midwest. I was a New Yorker, so I'm talking about the Midwest. <laughs> yeah. Like a thousand miles. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you're back in New York, or back in uh, England now. Yeah. Uh, after all that, getting back, and, you know, I'm sure there was. You were constantly busy and constantly thinking, but now you're back in England, and you've got time now to decompress and think about that. Did uh, did everything? How did you deal with that? How did things come flooding back to you, or was it? Uh, but uh, our next uh, thought was, when are we going again? And uh, none of us wanted to go, you know. Right, right. But we never said anything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, then, how long were you in England then before you guys jumped to Holland? Uh, about a month. A month. Six weeks. Uh huh. And, uh, and we jumped in Holland right after that. And how, how was that jump? How did that, how did things go well, with that? Holland was a day jump. It was a pleasure. We jumped at 9 o'clock in the morning, uh, sat down and had breakfast, pay <laughs> rations, you know. Uh -huh. Next thing you know, the Germans were on top of us. Oh. We lost quite a few men then. Well, our, supposedly the, uh, the uh, Dutch underground was supposed to keep us informed, but they goofed, and uh, they, they never got to us, so it was too late. You know? Oh, boy. We lost a lot of men now. Was that, uh, that, oper was that Operation Garden Basket, or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and what was the intent of that jump? What were you, what was the objective? In uh, Holland? Yeah. To stop the Germans from getting to Germany. Oh, to cut them off? To cut them off before they get to Germany, which we did, and then we, uh, we stopped them, captured them, and then we uh, started to go into Germany. But we never got very far. Uh, the Canadian, the, the French troops, were with us, so we had quite a quite an army, you know. Uh huh. And how was uh, how was the fighting there? Was it? Uh, did you get into quite a bit of combat there, or was? Uh... Well, for a while, but then the Germans took off. They're not crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so that would have, uh, okay, so you're in Holland, you've, you've pushed the, uh, the Germans back. Did you turn around then and, and come cut off the, the remaining Germans, or where, where did you guys go from there well, then? The, the beach troops took care of that. Okay. We didn't have to worry about that. Uh, by that time, the American, French, and Polish armies were all the way in. So we had nothing else to do, so we went back to uh, England. Okay. After I'm back, I'm back. Got ahead of myself. Okay. We left Holland, went back to England. And uh, after England, uh, I decided I wanted to re enlist. I, I'd like to go back, stay in Germany. I, I love the German country and people. It's crazy, isn't it? Well, now, how far, how far into Germany did you, did you guys go into Germany all the way to the war's end? Oh, no, no. Oh. No, we went in, uh, I'm trying to remember now. Uh -huh. We went in about two days. I guess it's about 20 miles into Germany. That's about it. And that was, this was all before the Bulge, Battle of the Bulge? Yeah, the Bulge was, was the last. We were back in England. Okay. And... Uh, we went back to France, and for some reason, the Germans started the bulge in Belgium. And uh, so we, put, we didn't jump in to the bulge, put us on trucks, and we drove in. Oh, is that right? <laughs> huh. 
Huh. You jump off the truck, you say, Geronimo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> So, so they trucked you in. To, you, so you were in support of the Battle of the Bulge then? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah we stopped, them, stopped them cold. Yeah. yeah. Patton came in with his tanks. Yeah. And uh, the Germans were so happy to surrender. Comrade, comrade. Uh. Well, well, speaking of cold, I understand that time period was one of the coldest winters in all of yeah. Europe. How was that for you? Were you? Were you properly attired? Uh, did you were you able to stay warm? We had, we were, didn't have warm clothing. Right. At all. Yeah. In fact, I'm getting a pension now for my frozen feet. <sighs> all these years, send me a check every month. Wow. Well, it's not and like I, you don't deserve it. But well, uh, I, I never put in for it. But here at the VA, uh, the young lady there, very nice. We we still see her. Uh, she questioned me about. Were you hurt at all? So I said, well, I got frozen feet. And she says, I'm going to fix this up for you. She got me the pension. Huh. A lot of money, too. Wow. How was that? I mean, surviving in those conditions like that. Uh, it was you, cold. You slept yeah. outside in foxholes and tents. And yeah, we had to dig holes. We had to dig below the snow to get to the hole. And then we'd take our shelter halves and cover ourselves up. But we managed, you know, improvise. Wow. I've always wondered, I mean, you look at that, that period, you know, you weren't properly attired, so you were cold, you probably weren't getting enough sleep, you probably weren't eating properly. That's for sure. All, all with war on top of you. I mean, each one of those individually would be enough to, to break a person. How, did you, how do you think you functioned with all that on top of you? Uh, we just did. Uh, uh, it sounds wacky, but we used to... Eat the cows, the pigs, whatever we can find to eat, the chickens. And uh, the farmers never said, never said a word to us. They helped us, in fact. Yeah, yeah. Uh, huh, wow. And that's where, uh, were you taken off the front lines because of your feet, or how did, uh, your frozen feet? No, uh, I went through the whole thing, and uh, I limped out, you know. But that's the way it went. Wow. Well, uh, very few of us. Uh, unless we were carried out, never left. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I dream about it at night. I, I said, I have these dreams that you you don't know if you're dreaming or mm -hmm. thinking, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I say, what did I do after that? Then I talk to myself at night. My wife was saying, what are you talking to? Wow. Uh, yeah. Do you mind, uh, we were talking before we started filming, you told the story about the, the German youth that you came across. Do you mind telling that story again and how that, ha what yeah. the story behind that and how that happened? And uh, Hitler, uh, or one of his henchmen, one of the German officers, uh, got these kids in school and he gave them weapons. I said, whenever you see any American soldiers, shoot them. So, I was, uh, uh, we went in with the uh, French underground looking for a, an ammunition dump that the Germans had set up uh, so, in the forest. So you were behind the lines? Enemy li you were in German, ter uh, German lines? Behind German lines? Oh, sure. Well, the Germans are more afraid of us than we were yeah. of them. Whenever they hear or see us, they run. And I saw the comrade. They couldn't wait to surrender. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, the Battle of the Bulge was very interesting in the fact that we went on trucks not equipped for anything like that. Right. And uh, we, we managed to survive, and the war was getting close to end. Almost could, over. could you sense that you, we were winning the oh, war? Yeah, oh, sure. okay. Okay. Yeah, they, the radio reports and the, we had the army newspapers. Okay. Again, whether it was the truth or not, yeah. that's all we knew. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But uh, it worked out where, uh, like I said, the Germans couldn't wait to surrender. Because they knew they'd be given three meals a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Americans were always. Yeah. Uh, you know, when a, an American was captured by the Germans, they practically starved him to death. Right. They put them in these, uh, there's a word for them, uh, where they kept the American prisoners. The Stalag? 
Stella. Yeah. I couldn't think of it. Yeah. Thank you. Well, you've been around enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah he was. Well, had you heard, uh, did, did uh, word get around uh, during the bulge where the Germans had caught all those Americans and, and, and mowed them down with a machine gun? Did you, did you get, did yeah, word a, get around to that? Uh, Malmody? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we got there, it was long after. Uh, we passed through it and a uh, bunch of crosses had cemeteries up there. In fact, my wife and I, some years ago, went back to Germany and we went back to all these places where I'd been. Oh, wow. It was I'll very bet, exciting. I'll bet so. A lot of changes, I'm sure, since... Uh, my wife is German. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and uh, I speak German. I spoke it fairly well by then. So, yeah. French, and I speak French. I did. Really? I took it in school. Okay. And I'm Jewish, you know. So, uh, the Yiddish language is very much like German. In fact, almost the same. So, I've had three languages under my belt to work with. Well, if you don't mind me asking, uh, uh, as far as you, know, you say being Jer uh, Jewish, did that play into your thought at all as far as did that make you any angrier uh, during the war? Or uh, a second part of that question, did you worry about being captured yeah. and with your German or uh, Jewish heritage? Uh, I wore a cross all through the war. Did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was well, a jumping Jew from Brooklyn, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but what what were your thoughts uh, being Jewish? Did you did that make you any angrier about the war, or is it? Well, uh, or, no, no, I'm just as angry as anybody else. Yeah, yeah. To think what they did to the Jews is yeah, right. Almost unreal. Yeah. Mm. There's no reason for it. Right. But Hitler wanted all the Jews' money, and the best way to do is kill them and take that money. Mm. So from the bulge, you guys worked. You said you worked about twenty, worked your way twenty miles into. More or uh, less, yeah. Yeah, and then what? You were pulled back, or what? Uh, why didn't you guys finish the war all the way to? Uh, we had enough. Okay. There were so many troops there. Yeah. They didn't know what to do with us. Okay. So we went back to England eventually, and uh, got discharged. I, I got discharged over there. So, really? Yeah, because I wanted to go back and stay in Germany. Which I did. I stayed in Germany for many years. Uh, discharge because you, you developed enough points with your battles and uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, more than enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so <laughs> you were discharged. Did you go back to the states, or did you just discharge and go over to Germany as a civilian? I went over from. I went back to the states. Okay. To get discharged. Okay. And then I went back to Germany, and I stayed there, and that's right. I tell you about my wife. Uh, she's German. And her, they were living in this country, in New York, and uh, uh, he wasn't happy at all. So he went back to Germany and she stayed here. They got divorced, and uh, she came into my dealership. You had bought, a Ford dealership? Yeah, okay. bought a car from me. And uh, it wasn't my dealership, huh. I was a sales manager. Okay. But she bought a car from me. And uh, started going together ever since. I'll be darned. Uh, <laughs> wow. How funny how things happen. Well, uh, let me ask you then, what was the appeal to you about Germany? Because, I mean, probably the German, Germany you saw was torn up by war and, and, and such. What, what about Germany made you want to go back, I guess? Uh, the people were so friendly, you wouldn't believe it. And uh, just because we were Americans mm -hmm. in uniform, mm -hmm. didn't bother them at all. Mm. We were invited into their homes, uh, went to functions, dances. It's just like we were home. Really? Huh? We treated better in Germany than they treated the, I hear the, the Vietnam vets got really, uh, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so now, when you, uh, were you back in the States then when the war ended, or where, where were you when, when VE Day was announced? I was back in the States. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, one thing that we talked about before we uh, started this interview, you said that you uh, were actually went, were training uh, jumpers. Uh, was, was that before you were discharged? Talk a little bit about... Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we... Uh, uh, I was telling you, I was stationed at Fort Benning, Georgia, uh, when I re-enlisted. So I had, I had time... Uh, to train new recruits. And that's when I would get in my extra jumps. 
Yeah, t- talk yeah. about uh, yeah. talk about that those jumps and yeah. not hooking up, but like you were yeah. tell that story. Was, well, uh, after a while, I decided I'm not going to hook up. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to. I won't hook up. I, I tuck my my riser into my parachute, and uh, so I'm going to fly around and, uh, for a while, see what it's like, just like a bird, you know. You know, it's funny, your hands are wings, and if you tilt this way, you go that way, and, go, and so on and so forth. Did, did you know that, or did you, were you kind of self-taught with that? Uh... No, well, you found that by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so, we talked about it afterwards, you yeah. know. Yeah. But it's amazing how, uh, you see how a bird flies, mm-hmm. except he flaps, yeah. you know. But we, but we coasted, same thing. And I really enjoyed it. I'll bet the those raw recruits thought you were pretty crazy, though. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, so. they, uh, you, you couldn't understand unless you went through it. Yeah. So you try to tell them about it, and they, yeah. they think he's a jerk. <laughs> uh, wow. How many jumps then all together did you make between practice jumps, uh, war jumps, and then and training jumps? You, 28. 28 jumps. I love it. Well, and first, made, it, made it without a scratch through all of them? Well, I landed on my head once. Oh. <laughs> and it's funny about that. Uh, I was in training. I mean, training these get these kids. Uh-huh. And uh, we were walking down the road. And uh, I said to one of the guys, when I came to, I was walking. I said, you know, there's something strange about me? No. Because I was walking in formation like I should be. And I can't remember at all getting there. Wow. Uh, I landed on my head. Yeah. I found a bruise pretty well. <laughs> I probably actually. had a concussion, huh? Yeah, you I think? probably did. Yeah. Wow. Uh, wow. How many, uh, from your, when you guys shipped over initially to when you came back, how many of your original unit made it back? Do you, you remember, was there any sort of statistics on? Well, from the original bunch? Yeah. Well, I can just talk about my platoon. Yeah. I was, there were about 35 of us. I was the demolitions. We blew up Europe. Really did. We blew up all the pillboxes we could find, uh, played the booby traps uh, wherever we could. And um, that's what I did. And uh, what were we talking about? We were just asking my how many of your initial platoon that oh, went yeah. over came back. Or, oh, uh, I think about six of us. Out of that original 35. Yeah. And, uh, of course, some I lost track of. Yeah. Uh, they, they may be still alive today. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, yeah, But probably not. I was the kid. I went in when I was just 18. And um, I'm trying to think about a bunch of guys that I, 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 I kept track of, or track we kept with, a, we used to have uh, reunions mm-hmm, mm-hmm. all over the country. Mm-hmm. And that's how we found out who died afterwards, and right. that's how we kept track. Right, right. Uh, so you were the demolition expert. Uh, so on top of being in a very dangerous situation, you had the dangers of, of dealing with booby traps and and yeah. and and explosives, that uh... I, I used to look forward to setting booby traps. Is that right? Well, I used to mark it so our guys would know. Okay. Uh, I put something in, in a rich color next to it, like a piece of material. Uh huh. Able to put it down next to it, so the guys would know there's a booby trap within a steps distance. You know. So they stay away from it. Yeah. You didn't. It didn't bother you that you were dealing with explosives and the danger. No, run. I was trained for it. Wow. Yeah. I got to be. Uh, I enjoyed those booby traps. Really? Wow. I stood around one time and watched one go off. Some. Well, I won't go into that. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Wow. Hmm. So where, were you uh, back home in New York or were you down in Georgia when VE Day was announced? Do you remember where you were when? Uh, VE Day. 
I don't, must have been uh, down south. Okay. At Fort Benning. Was there a pretty good celebration going on? Oh, yeah. 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 A lot of the guys were sorry to see it end because they had the life they never had before. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they came, came from farms and small right. towns. Right. Now they were with groups of guys who were having a ball. And the women and whatnot. And yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how was that for you? Because, I mean, you're growing up in Brooklyn, you know, you knew basically New Yorkers. How was it meeting different people from different parts of the country for the first time? And Well, they all knew I was from Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. And I, I lost a lot of my accent, but I still maintained uh -huh. quite a bit with that. Uh -huh. And uh, I, uh, I was one of the guys. Yeah. That's about it. Well, did you find it? Different to meet a, a Midwest farm boy. I mean, were they in the uh, beginning? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was one kid that stood out in my mind. His name was Mesmer Cook. Came from topmost Kentucky. Oh boy! So after long after the war, he got killed. Long after the war, I went to topmost Kentucky and I met some of his relatives. They didn't want to talk about him. Is that right? You know, they said, you better go home. Really? Uh, they probably hurt them so bad. Huh. Wow. He was that kid, the youngest of the bunch, that went over, you know. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Just haven't talked about this in a long time. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm hoping I'm not turning up no, too bad of memories. Uh, I'm glad to hear. I'm yeah. glad to remember. Yeah. I've got some books there. Some pictures and stuff, if you want to see it. Oh, well, we will, certainly yeah. after the interview here, for sure. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, what it was like being in England. Were you? Did you guys get uh, passes to go into London and mingle with the locals at all? And, and, yeah, uh, we would get weekend passes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> As I spent a few weekends in London, uh, a small town that I... That I enjoyed was Nottingham, a small town in, in, deep in, in England, northwest. Mm -hmm. And um, I used to love those people. They were very nice to us. We uh, we took their homes over. Yeah. Not that they they gave it to us. Right. Where were they? <coughs> so you guys would room with locals, and you weren't in uh, barracks or anything. No, we didn't have barracks in those days. Uh, wow. We moved into their, their homes with them. They would generally stay in the attic or in the cellar, and we would have the house. Uh, <coughs> do you remember the family you stayed with? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. I should, but I don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about, uh, I say traveling through, but you really wasn't, wasn't much of a vacation, but going through France and, and Belgium and Holland and, and such, uh, Describe what you were seeing. There was a lot of, were a lot of, a lot of damage, a lot of destroyed villages, and oh, yeah. yeah, I've got pictures of that. Yeah, and uh, you know, whole cities were nothing but uh, nothing, buildings and pieces. <coughs> <coughs> the roads were cow pads. Hmm. We would uh, during the war. The English would bomb these cities during the day and uh, we go out at night and bomb at night mm -hmm. so they were getting this day and night mm. Gloria was living in Germany at the time mm. she used to go, <coughs> excuse me <coughs> she used to go into the cellar to hide from bombs wow holy cow wow. Did, did you mingle much with the locals as you guys were, were moving uh, I mean with the Belgians and the French uh, the uh, we, they would come, uh, we would offer them rations, <coughs> we invited them to the post exchanges, and we'd buy th stuff for them. So they got very friendly because yeah. they knew we were going to give them stuff. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How was communications back and forth from home as far as uh, letters and, and, and communications, particularly with you on the move all the time? Were you... Were you getting mail back and forth? Yeah, we had uh, V-mail. Uh -huh. yeah. I had nobody I really yeah. I could send it to. Yeah. 
my, uh, both of my brothers are still alive then, so we communicate that way. But were either one of them in the service at the same time? Or? Yeah, they were both, one was in the Navy, and my other brother that was in the Air Force. In fact, he was a secretary to Hap Arnold, who commanded the Air Force. Right. We went to, he was in Washington. Oh, okay. We got some pictures of us that we took in the streets in Washington. Yeah. Wow. Uh, uh. He introduced me to a lot of his the generals. That he, Is that right? He was a, a master, six stripers, master sergeant. Uh, and, my, and my kid brother, Earl, was in the Navy. He was on a, a, a cruiser called the Vicksburg, and they shelled Iwo Jima during the war. Wow. We all had a piece of the action. Right, right. <laughs> and you were able to communicate, keep in touch with each oh, other? Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And well, every, everybody? We, we would do it through my father. Okay. 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 Wow. Um, lost my train of thought, but I was going to ask you here. Yeah, this uh, happens to me all the time. <laughs> well, I'm younger. I have no excuse. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, <coughs> so, uh, so after you got uh, had enough points to come home, uh, were uh, uh, discharged and decided to re-enlist then? Was there a gap between that at all, or...? No, almost immediately. Oh, okay. In yeah. fact, I re-enlisted while I was still in the service. Oh, okay. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. I had enough points to get out, but uh, I didn't want to get out. Yeah. Now, did, now, was it? Uh, did you ask to go train, or were you? How did you get into to training uh, the other uh, paratroopers? How did how that come about? Is that something you requested, or were you just told? Uh, no, they saw by my my service record that I was in it, and so they felt I could teach. Okay. Was there any, any thought at that point, because the war was still going on in, in the Pacific, was there any thought of you guys being transferred over to the Pacific at all? <coughs> uh, we talked about it, but nothing ever came of it. Okay. Fortunately, we dropped the bomb. Right. And uh, that right. ended it all very quickly. How, how soon then after uh, the war with Japan was officially over, uh, were you, did you stay in the service then? Were you? Um, oh, I just never got out. Oh, you were you were career sir. I, I re-enlisted eventually, and went back to Germany. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so you were stationed over in Germany then for? Yeah, I was. That's an interesting. I, you know, I haven't thought about that. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I became. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I uh, became a chauffeur to a general. First. I didn't tell him, I learned how to drive. Yeah, <laughs> All right, yeah, okay. So I went out and uh, I told his sergeant, uh, I'll, be, uh, I'll come back to the general in about a week. I've got a few things I want to get rid of. <laughs> so that's all too I learned how to drive. I got driving for a General Carter. I still remember him. And that's something. Huh. He was a brigadier. And then uh, the biggest thrill of my life was I wound up driving General Eisenhower. Is that right? Now, you see what happened? Uh, Eisenhower was his girlfriend at the time, a girl from London. She went back to London. He needed a driver. So since I was the senior driver working for this other general, they let me drive for Ike. Is that? So you were back, were you back with part of the occupation forces then? Is that? Oh, yeah. uh, okay. Wow. I, uh, I, I went around so much that I didn't know where I was, <coughs> but it was good. I enjoyed it. What was uh, General Eisenhower like? Uh, he was a very interesting character. He'd be in the back seat and I'd be chauffeuring. And he'd say, uh, with a smile on his face. I couldn't see the smile. Yeah. He'd say, you know, Sarge, how did you come out of it in one piece? You know, he says, I'm just joshing. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a picture of him. Uh, he's saying, I'll show it to you later, he's saying goodbye to us uh, that afternoon before we jumped in Normandy. Right, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. I got mementos about everything. I, I don't know how I did it, but uh, we had moved so many times. Yeah. But I kept collecting and adding. Wow. Huh. So you so you went on to make uh, uh, the Army your career then? or No. Oh, okay. After my lesson was up. Uh, I just quit. Oh, okay. 
And then this is when you went back to New York and, and went to work for the Ford dealership and, yeah. and met Laura, and that's how that all kind of progressed. So. Yeah, it was interesting. Huh. So you, uh, so I guess walk us a little bit, now your post-military life. You, you, you met Laura. You... Yeah. I told you she, her husband uh, went back to Germany. They got mm -hmm. divorced. Yeah. And so she came in to buy a car. Yeah. Uh, I was just, I was in charge there. And, you know, I got to be a salesman. Yeah. So I sold her a car. Yeah. And we kept going together ever since. Wow. And how long, how long have you guys been married? Uh, <laughs> uh oh, wrong question. Twenty some thirty years. I don't know. Yeah. She she knows the work. Yeah. She keeps dates. I don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's very good at. It. Yeah. So did you, as far as a career, did you stay in the car business, or uh, talk a little bit about your career and 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 your family, and and kind of bring us up to from that point yeah, up to I, uh, to the present. Uh, I worked at this Ford dealership in New York and. They got a new sales manager, I didn't like him. Uh, so I got a job uh, in Valley Stream at another Ford dealership. And I stayed there for, until, until I quit. All right. I retired. Is that right? And you know, the owner there, his son, the guy and I got very friendly. He said, Stan, how did, you, how did you sell all those cars? You got all those people coming here now. You know? Huh. I said, Tell them the truth, answer their questions, and help them buy what they want. Yeah. And he never forgot it. Huh. I saw him years afterwards. He said it worked. He said after his father retired, he took the dealership. And he, he trained all of his men what I told him. Really? Huh. Wow. <coughs> <coughs> so what, uh, what brought you out here to Colorado? Uh, our boy... Tom uh, was working for Budweiser out here. Okay. And uh, we wanted to get out of New York, so we decided to come here. And we came here, Budweiser moved, moved to Florida. <laughs> so he's, he's in Jacksonville now. And uh, so we stayed here. And how many children do you and Laura have? None. She has one, I've got one. Oh, okay. Previous marriages. Oh, okay. So I was married to this German girl. You know. Okay, so two, cho uh, two uh, children between you, and how about uh, grandchildren and, and such? We have two grandchildren two. on my wife's side. Yeah. Okay, okay. It's, like, it's a picture over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. They were just here. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, uh, Stan, we'll, we'll start to wind down this interview. Yeah. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you wanted to talk about? Any stories that uh, you wanted to tell so we, we make sure we've captured as much of this as, as, as we can? Uh, anything that uh, I forgot to ask? I'm trying to think myself. What I what... I'm trying to think. Was there anything that was different? Uh, no, actually not. I'm going through the countries now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, when we were in Scotland. Uh, I went to a bar. So how about some scotch? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> whiskey. Yeah. Oh, you want uh, the name of American whiskeys. <laughs> uh, uh, wow. Uh, and, um, I dream about some of this stuff. And, yeah. And, uh, I wish I'd retain it. You know? Right. But as fast as I dream it, I forget it. Well, now, as far as dreams, do you have, are they... Are they flashbacks? Are they are they good dreams? Are they bad dreams? Uh, Combination. Do things still haunt you, or has time really kind of the softened? Bad, the bad dreams come back. Do they? Yeah. Mostly. Uh, but, uh, they may be bad, but in a way they may help. It may teach you or show you the way things should not be. Yeah. And uh, so, in, in my little way. Uh, I belong to the VFW, the Veterans of Farm Wars, uh -huh. and uh, I try to tell them to be good. I give little speeches occasionally. To be good to people, you know, uh, help them, don't hurt them. Yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess one question I forgot to ask early on, after you, you got out of the military, uh, particularly, you know, after everything you'd been through, the battles and everything you saw, 
was it much of was it hard to adjust back into civilian life uh, for you at all, or was it? Uh, it was. Yeah, I mean, they talk about now uh, days with, you know, particularly the Vietnam and, and our present wars, yeah. the, you know, the post-traumatic syndrome, and did you feel like you had any of that, or was because you really didn't have any outlets to get no, help but, with you? But we were treated royally by everybody back home, mm -hmm. and uh, that's why I feel sorry for these. Vietnam best they're treating my dirt. Yeah, yeah. At least what that's what I see in the yeah, papers. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Is that true? I, I think it's getting better. I think initially when they came they came home to a, uh, to a to welcome they didn't deserve. Yeah, they used to blame them for the war. Yeah. But yeah, they did it. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. But the war, uh, I come to believe, is the most stupidest we talked about that. Your best friends are your worst enemies today. And your worst enemies then are your best friends today. Yeah. So war solves nothing. Right, right. Just right. a lot of people killed. Right. Wow. Mm. I think about some of the poor guys who, who don't have arms or legs or blinded or hearing is impaired. Or, well, even even yourself, I mean, to this day, you're still suffering from oh, yeah. the war with your feet, you know? It don't bother me much. But when it's really cold, I stay indoors. Oh. Oh. That's why I'm not wearing shoes right now. Yeah. It's warmer with the socks. Wow. Well, one question I always like to ask towards the end of the interview is, how do you think that time period, your war experience, affected your life, played a role in your life, uh, changed your life at all, or did it? Was it, or was it just simply just a chapter in your life that you went through? How do you think? Uh, how would you answer that? Well, how would I answer that? I think uh, about. Some of the friends I've lost, uh, people uh, who I met in London, civilians, they got bombed out and got killed, and their houses destroyed. And the bad things keep coming back, but I always think of a reason <coughs> why it happened. Yeah. Well, um, and, uh, the last thing I'll, I'll, I'll ask here is there, for those uh, friends and family and others that may view this film, is there any closing statement you'd like to make uh, about anything to, to re kind of recap this interview or, or not? Uh, it may sound a little foolish. Be nice to people. <coughs> if you don't say anything bad, because it'll hurt them, but it'll hurt you eventually. So, <coughs> so just, <coughs> just be good and amiable to people, and uh, stay friendly. Do you think that's a philosophy you've always had, or do you think that was... Did the war help you kind of develop that? Oh, no, it happened afterwards. Yeah. Okay. I was a very selfish guy when I was a kid. You know, what did you play with my toys? Yeah, yeah. Huh. <laughs> no, but I, uh, uh, people locally here, uh, though I'm the nicest guy in the world, because yeah. I make sure I am. Yeah. I make it my business, too. <laughs> yeah. Huh. yeah. Well, Stan, Bob, Sarge, uh, I want to thank you for, for sitting down to tell your story today, but uh, more importantly, I want to thank you for your service to our country. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, Ike, uh, General Eisenhower then, was, was thanking us for what we were about to do. These are guys from 101st Airborne. 82nd, and the Canadian, we were all together, and he would talk to each of us, and then this picture just shows him talking to the 101st Airborne. But he, as he gradually turned around, he says, of course, for all you guys, I want to thank you for what you're doing, and your country is very proud of you. And that's you right there. Yeah. That is something else. And this is uh, the day before you uh, was, jumped yeah, on D-Day. That night. That night. I wonder how many guys are still around. Now, Stan, you remember where this picture was taken? Yeah, that was in 
in France. Um, we were at this farmhouse and um, I was at the farmhouse and I walked to the farmhouse oh, if you, about half a mile out of I walked over to the farmhouse and um, I see this long bayonet. I mentioned it. Ah. There's a bayonet coming out of the other side of the farmhouse. And we had short bayonets. So I knew how to be German. So as he came around the bend, I let him have it. And uh, I hate to say it, but I still see that. Yeah. You can't forget things like that. Right, sure. But it was either you or him, so. Yeah, well, yeah, you can say that. Yeah. That was, this is uh, in uh, a park in Brooklyn called Prospect Park. And um, we were just going to the zoo, and I stopped for a drink of water. And that's your dress uniform? Yeah. <coughs> this is a little town in Germany that was nothing but bricks and <laughs> water. Totally destroyed, Completely huh? destroyed. Called Aachen. It's more or less in the uh, southern part of Germany. Okay. And this is uh, where we quarter the German prisoners. We had them in the barracks. Excuse me. And they used to come and go during the day like they belonged. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And we knew they weren't going anywhere. Yeah. Because if they did, they'd be in deep trouble. And there, they got three meals a day. So you couldn't tell who's German, who's American sometimes. Huh. You took your hat off, you know, oh, look alike. <laughs> this is in England uh, before we went into uh, the Battle of the Bulge. So I had a little time to kill, and I just, the guys were taking pictures of me and vice versa. And that's about it. This is a gravestone of Charlie Hodges. Uh, he got killed over there. And uh, or he, he died soon after. So he was buried in March, what does it say? 75. 75. Yeah, that must have been on my trip back, yeah. He was a, uh, he was a... He was a one of my guys. One of your guys? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Charlie Hodges. Thank you. little bulge. Uh, this is, you never believe it. I carried a camera all through the war. That's how we got all these pictures coming. Is that right? Yeah. And because that's my gun. And uh, first aid pack on my leg. <laughs> <laughs> Rations in my pockets. It used to cause the devils with baggy pants. That's what they meant. <laughs> yeah. I still don't know how to understand how you guys made it through the elements. And oh. I mean, you don't look like you're all that uh, warm or wrapped up in proper clothing. But uh, no, we weren't. But uh, we managed. You know, uh, the queen stayed. Excuse me. The queen stayed at this castle when we were there, and she was very nice to escort us around, showed us the castle. Is that right? The Queen? Yeah. The, this is in England? Yeah. Is that right? <coughs> yeah, that was in, um, outside of London. Yeah, this is, uh, we have a reunion every so often, and uh, it just shows where we, these name bands are, where we're from, and our name, and the regiment we were with. We were all 82nd Airborne Division, uh, whatever. I'm in here somewhere. Uh -huh. I don't mind. I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. It's really not in here. Uh, I had hair then. <laughs> I have another I have hair in the closet too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I meant to ask you, uh, speaking of reunions, did you ever go back for any of the uh, uh, get togethers for the Normandy um, anniversaries? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, in fact, uh, we had one. Harry Udick, he's gone now. Uh, we had one in his hometown, which was uh, either Kansas or... 1944 at Normandy? Yeah, well, we, we got that one, I think. Oh, but, uh, but as far as, actually, did you ever go back to Normandy, to any of the... Uh, uh... We, we went back when we went to Europe, didn't we? We went to Holland? <coughs> we went to, to Belgium. A, a, the American Cemetery, and I forgot where that is, in... Belgium. In Holland or Belgium? Yeah. Okay. This is a picture when we all got home on leave. We were all in the service at that time. My brother Earl was in the Navy. 
He was under Vicksburg when they shelled Iwo Jima. My brother Larry was uh, secretary to Hap Arnold, who commanded the Air Force. My stepmother Rose, who are dead. And of course, me. Hmm. Larry, who was uh, uh, secretary to Hap Arnold, who commanded the uh, Air Force during World War II. You want the light on or off? And uh, your brother that was in the Navy is in the middle? Yeah, Earl was on the, the Vicksburg, which uh, shelled the Iwo Jima. And of course, that's me. Go ahead, Stan. Well, these, these are all the guys from, uh, they were in my uh, company, headquarters company. Uh-huh. And uh, of course, they're all named, Harold Mann. Leon Israel changed his name to Mason, I told you about that. Uh-huh. Gherkin, his best buddy, Sergeant Gherkin, and the rest of us. And Where are you in this picture? I'm right here. Okay. I'm hiding. He was killed right after this. Who'll hmm. be done? Hmm. Where, now, where was this picture taken, do you remember? Yeah, uh, after, after Normandy. Okay. 